Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at creating responsive layouts with media queries. Now to make your web page or web application responsive, which means that the layout of the web page will change depending on the screen size and device, you can use what is called media queries. Media queries lets you define separate styles for different screen sizes and devices. So for example on a computer screen you might have two boxes aligned next to each other with the float or perhaps the display property. But on a mobile screen, you specify these two boxes to be positioned below each other instead and take up the entire width. This way we can create layouts that looks good no matter if you use a mobile, tablet or a computer screen. Now you can also use CSS grid frameworks for the purpose of creating responsive layouts of course. But you still need to understand how media queries work and you should be able to work with it. And it's good to know how to work with it. So let's go ahead and create a new HTML5 document. And uh, just make sure that you include the viewport meta tag, which I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see how it looks. So first you got just the meta declaration, then the name viewport. Then in the content you tell it to be width equals with device width. Now this will tell the browser that will load this web page to uh, adapt itself to the screen's size or the device's width. We're also gonna set the initial scale to one not zero. This sets the initial zoom of the web page, and in this case, one CSS pixel will be equal to one viewport pixel, so the zoom will adapt itself to the device. Also, go ahead and import a style sheet. You can just uh, name it style CSS. So we're gonna go ahead and create. I haven't created the file yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, save it as style CSS. Now the first thing we can do, let's add a universal selector just to get rid of any unwanted margins on body elements and stuff. Also let's set the body and the HTML to have a um, width of 100%. We will be working a little bit with percent and a height of 100%. So we want the body and HTML to be set to 100% both. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a really simple Yes, the really simple layout with a container that wraps a header and then just four boxes that are gonna adapt itself as we change the browser width. So let's go ahead and open up index.html. It's gonna have some spacing here. So let's start off by just creating the a div. Let's give it a class of container. This will be the main container for the web page. Inside the container, let's define, we can use a semantic element for this, so let's use the header, HTML5 header element, and let's just give it an ID of header. And below the header, let's add, uh, we can add div with, let's give it a class of box, and let's call this one box one. And let's go ahead and let's copy this, and create a total of four of these. And let's name this to box 2 and this to box 3 and this to box 4. So this is going to be the, just the container that wraps all of this content. Then we're going to have this header and then these floating boxes. In this case, we're going to use the float property to make them float next to each other. And we will have two boxes per row. Now, since we're going to use float, let's just specify a clear fix here at the bottom. So we just do not break the markup. We're going to create the styles for this right now. So let's open up style.css. And we can start by just defining the style for the container. Let's give it a width of, um, let's say, 100%. And let's also set the max width. Oh, sorry. A max width of 1100 pixels. Like that. Now, this means that the width of the container will be 1100 pixels until the browser viewport width is smaller than 1100 pixels. Then the width of the container will be 100% instead. All right. So let's also add, uh, we can add margin left to the container. Let's set it to auto. Also let's set margin right to auto. And um, Let's just, so we can see it, let's give it a background color. We can give it CCC and let's give it a uh, height, yes, so it's visible. 
like that. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and optimize my browser window because we're gonna need the entire screen size for this tutorial. So as you can see now, we got this container. It's perfectly centered along the x-axis, which is exactly what we want to begin with. So now let's go ahead and add some stars for the header as well. And we can remove the background color. Or let's, let's, let's leave the background color and just remove the height of the container. Because we're gonna, as you know, we have some elements in the container, so they're gonna fill up the space of the container. So let's go ahead and create the header, the header styles. Now let's just set the height to 120 pixels. We can set a, a background color. Let's use a hex format. Oh no, we can use a predefined color. Let's just say blue. Now the header element is a block element. So it initially takes up the width of 100%. So we don't have to specify the width of this in this case. And uh, yeah, that's it for the header. And for the styling, it doesn't matter. Now we're just going to create a really simple layout. So the styling itself does not matter. The design perspective of, of it does not matter in this case. We're just going to use a couple of random colors to define everything. So let's go ahead and create the boxes now. The boxes are, let's start by giving them a width of 50%. So we got two per row, as we said earlier. Let's also give it a height. We can give it a height of, let's say, 140 pixels, maybe. And a background color. Or no, let's, instead, we can define the background color on each individual box. We can give them different background colors. Instead, let's just say float left here. Now the markup is collapsed so we not, since we don't have a clear fix. So let's create a clear fix as well. So we get that. So now we can we got these boxes here. They're not visible because we don't have any background color on them. But we have one box here, one box here, one box here, one box here. So let's just go ahead and define a couple of different colors for these boxes so we can see which box is which. So let's say the box we gave a class of box one. Let's give it a background color of, uh, let's say, uh, yellow. And then we got the box 2. Let's give it a background color of uh, pink. And box 3, background color. Oops. Um, Let's say um, gray. And then for the box four, let's just say background color red. So now let's take a look at this and see what we got. So yeah, now we got this really simple layout going here with the header, then a box here uh, with a width of 50%, a box here, same with 50%, and same here and same here. So we got these four boxes aligned along the x-axis to per row. So let's go ahead, just to make this a little bit more clear, we can go ahead and add, let's say, box one, box two, box three, and box four. So now, go ahead and you can go ahead and right click and choose inspect to open up the developer console. And go ahead and click the icon here to show the device toolbar. Now we can actually preview this in either laptop or tablet or mobile. So let's say now in this case we want to add some media queries to make this responsive. So in tablet we want the markup to look like this. We want the layout to look like this. In tablet, let's say that we want this box one to be 100% in width and below it we want to add box two and give it 100% in width and let's keep box three and box four as they are right now and when we go down to mobile let's also have this the same as in tablet so box one and box two with 100% and box three and box four let's also give them a width of 100% when we get down to mobile so let's take a look at how to do this so now we're going to start actually declaring some media queries. We can go down here to the bottom below the clear fix to do this. So I'm just going to type the media query and then I'm going to display it. So let's say...
So this is the actual media query and all the styles that we're gonna place in here will apply as long as the screen is smaller than or equal to 700, 768 pixels. In this case, this is meant for tablet. If you look here, you can see tablet has a width of 768 pixels. Now this screen property is used for computer screens, tablets, and smartphones. You could also use the all property. It's used for all media type devices. You can also use print. It's used for printers. And you can also use speech. It's used for screen readers that reads the page out loud. Now, normally you would use either all or screen. But in this case, let's set it to screen so it here we got a property that's used for computer screens and tablets and smartphones. Then we got this declaration here saying if the max width is 768 pixels, apply the styles that are within this media query. So let's say now when we get down to 768 pixels, so we're on tablet, we want box 1 to instead of being 50% of it, we want it to be uh, a 100% width. All right, let's do the same for box two. Let's give it a width of 100%. Yeah, I'm just gonna add a comment here. So this is for tablet. So if we check now, we've got laptop, everything is as we said it initially. If we click on tablet, as you can see now, box 1 and box 2 are taking up 100% width, yes, as we told it to do, and they are stacked below each other. Box 3 and box 4 are still 50% because we haven't declared any styles for them yet. Now if we go down to mobile, you can see box 1 and box 2 are still 100% in width, taking up the entire x-axis of the screen, and box 3 and box 4 are still 50%. Now let's make box 3 and box 4 go down as well to 100% when we go down to mobile. So let's open up style CSS, and we're going to declare a um, uh, media query for mobile. So let's say again media screen and max width in this case is 320 pixels. Just like that. Now let's say all right box 3 width 100% since we're not we're on um, since we're on mobile now and box 4 with 100% so now let's take a look at how this looks yeah, as you can see now actually box 3 and box 4 are uh, as well taken up 100% with yes as we told it if you go up to tablet you can see the first two are 100% with and these are as specified originally and laptop, everything is 50% in width. So we actually got a really simple responsive layout working now with the media queries. And that's basically how you use the media queries. Now you can also like specify, for example, let's say... Uh, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Let's say media screen and... min width is 0 pixels and max width is 320 pixels all right so now these styles will apply as long as the screen is bigger than 0 pixels and smaller than or equal to 320 pixels Alright, so you can nest them like this and just give values between viewport sizes. Alright, so you can do that if you want to. In many cases, it's not necessary at all and just doing it like this is perfectly fine. But that's up to you how you want to structure your code. So yeah, that's how to get started with using media queries to create some basic responsive layouts. I hope you learned something and... Uh, yeah, leave a comment if you would like to see some special tutorial or something. Thank you and bye-bye.